G'day, welcome back. Today is day number three, and we're going to be talking about the geometry tool inside Lightroom Mobile. And this is day number three of 30 days Lightroom Mobile. And this is still inside kind of step number one of my four step photo editing workflow, if you like, where I, where I work on composition. Then I work on tones, which we're going to get into tomorrow, color, and then local adjustments. So, uh, local adjustments. They're, they're a paid subscription tool. Same with today. This is a paid subscription tool. So if you are, are you take full advantage of the free version of Lightroom, for most of us, that is fantastic. And for uh, if you're not quite sure whether to pay that little bit, and, and to be honest, I was on the fence for a long, long time. And the reason was, was that things like geometry, the, the tools I'm going to show you here, some of them I could do inside Snapseed using Perspective. That tool is amazing. Another one is Screwit, S-K-R-W-T. And uh, between those two apps, I could do most of the things inside here. But there's a couple of tools inside Geometry which are, which are fantastic, and I can't wait to show you those. We have two different things. We have Distortion and Perspective Distortion. So Lens Distortion, Distance to Camera Distortion, Barrel Distortion, pin cushion distortion, they're both with the lens. How that happens is barrel distortion is typically when you have a, put a, a wide angle lens attachment, if you get a cheap one, you know those impulse buys you get at the at the, at the the register, even a, even a, a, a camera shop, you'll get those, those little lens kits. And if you get one of those wide angle lens, what happens is that your phone is used to capturing a certain field of view. And when you put a lens attachment on it, all of a sudden it's got, oh, got all this extra data, all this extra information, pixels, and I'm trying to squeeze it all onto the same sensor. So when, you, when you're squeezing it on there, that's when you get that, that distortion and it, and it bows outwards. You'll also see that if you use a, a fisheye lens as well as another one. Now, the other one is pin cushion. So this is where it bows the other way. So it bows inward and pin cushion is typically when you put a zoom lens on, right? So at, at not so much a two times, but once you go beyond a two times tally converter and something like this here, once you start putting something like that on your on your lens, then you get that uh, that other distortion and it uh, gets pretty crazy pretty quickly. Now you can fix that inside Snapseed, screw it. The others are distance to subject. So if you have your wide angle lens and if you've got a 13 Pro, you will see, uh, the iPhone, you will see the ultra wide. Some Samsung and Androids have an ultra wide as well with all their multiple lenses. What that does, if you get too close, especially with a face, what happens is the nose center gets bigger and the outside, like your ears, get smaller and wrap around. So we'll show you how to fix that. The other is uh, perspective distortion. You know what it's like, you see a beautiful sunset, sunrise, want to capture it, capture this moment, capture the beautiful colors, lift up your phone, oh, it's tiny, it looks so small, and that's 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 normal, that's, um, so that's uh, the other one. All right, are you ready to have a look inside the app? We'll bring it up. So I have this photo here, this is a local church, and this is a great example. Now this is not extreme, I'll show you a more extreme one inside uh, Tower of London. I took another photo of a building and because I was so close, couldn't get further back, it ended up having that issue. Now there's two parts here. One is we go into optics, okay, so we go into optics, enable lens correction. Now this corrects that, that uh, barrel distortion I was talking about, so I turn it off, okay. Turn it on, and you can see what's happening is a little bulging in the middle. So it's correcting, and it's recognized. It knows with the metadata, it knows that this is an iPhone, and it'll go in, and knowing the typical lens distortion with this typical scene, it'll go, okay, I need to bulge the middle to make it a bit flatter. Working from the top down, this is not your typical workflow, working from the top down, but I just want to show you here top down, okay? And I will show you here distortion does the same thing exactly the same thing as what that lens correction did this tool here enable lens correction using distortion does the same thing but it's a bit more aggressive and instead of just concentrating on the on the center of the frame it pulls in and distorts more of the frame when it does it okay so that could be good it can be really handy here we go this one's going to be a challenge the perspective distortion is quite extreme not only that, there's not much room in the top, so it's going to crop. All right, so we're going to go to perspective. First thing you want to do is the vertical and go, you know what, we're going to play with that. 
Well, it's cropping it, isn't it? We're losing the top. So it's kind of the reality we are going to lose some of that. Okay, now what I can do is go here and I can go uh, offset and I can try and bring it back. You can see there, I can bring it back. It's still there. But then I'm going to have to go and crop the sides and I've lost the bottom. So what I suggest is first we go to aspect. We try and squash it first. And then we go in here and do this process. Okay, and I won't go all the way. I might come back just a little bit. Okay, and then I will go there. See how we did that? So by using aspect first and squashing the photo first, that has meant that we've lost less. Make sense? Now if I go up the top here and constrain crop, it'll crop where, where it needs to, to do that. So there's our before and there's our after. Okay, so I go into the geometry tool again and you'll see up the top here, I'm going to leave constrain crop turned on. If I go up the top here, you've got, this is a pay option, you've got uh, auto, guided, level, vertical, full. Now I'm going to, what I'm going to do is just go auto first of all and tap the screen first, get rid of the menu, hold my finger and I can see the before and the after. Quite dramatic improvement, which is really cool, really good. Now what I can do is I'm going to go off initially and I'm going to go level. All right, so now what level does is it is basically straightening the photo, which is really cool. Now, it talked about that earlier in cropping and straightening where you can, you've got your crop aspect and you can just swipe left and right and it will straighten it. This one here, it will automatically go, you know, I think it needs this. It picks up on visual references in the photo, like a, a window frame or the roof line of a building and go, this this looks, looks good. Level, vertical is where it's done here. Now it's it's done the same thing, but instead of prioritizing what should be straight, it's looked at those uh, vertical sections here and it's done a really good job. There's the before, there's the after. Now it's done all the compression, compressing the photo, distorting the rest of it to make sure that it prioritizes those vertical lines, which is, which is really clever. Now full is the same as auto. It's the same as auto except it has prioritized, instead of prioritizing distortion, because auto includes distortion, full means that it's, it's concentrating on the vertical lines, it's concentrating on the horizontal lines, and it's just doing that. It's not worrying about that whole bulging in the middle and that sort of thing. And you can see what's happened here is it's, it's made it all perfect and it's kind of moved it. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna undo that. Okay, I'm gonna turn off constrained crop and see whether there's a difference here. Full, and you can see that this is why because you can see it's added the white bits because it's distorted the photo that much and then it's gone and cropped it and that's why it's cropped and it's moved it all. Now, guided, this is this is fun. This is really fun. What we can do now is we can actually tell it, these are the vertical lines I want you to focus on. These are the horizontal lines. Now there might be two, you can add up to four and a combination of two of each, two vertical, two horizontal, or you could do two vertical, one, whatever you like. So I'm gonna go tap and add and add and there's one and this is going to turn out really oops this is going to turn out really funky i know because it's quite an extreme photo there we go <laughs> that's two and now i'm going to go with a horizontal and i'm just going to i'm just going to guess this because it will readjust each time i do it and i can go you know what that actually looks good and there we go so that's done that's done that okay Done. Now I'm going to have to scale, bring that back so that I can bring it back. And I'm going to have to use some aspect and it's already maxed out. Aspect is maxed, maxed out. Is this one of the, it's not a negative thing. One of the things about uh, Lightroom is that, I mean, that's all looking good, but it's it's not looking good. <laughs> I, can't, I want to squash that even more. And once you max out at a hundred, that's it. Now you can, in some apps like Snapseed, you can save it and then you can re or export the photo, bring the photo back in again and treat it like a brand new photo and then you can go and you can go minus 100 again. With Lightroom, it's, it does what we call non-destructive non non editing. So if we save this, bring it back, it saves all these edits inside the photo and we go open it up and it'll open up with these same edits. But you can see here, the building's looking really good, it's nice and level but now it's stretched and I can't bring it back any further. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's 
that's the really cool, fun, paid options inside uh, the geometry tool.